begin with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we uh, thank you for this morning. Thank you for the flowers and uh, the places we can walk in the calling. Just pray that you be with us today, help us to make this time wisely, Lord, if it's to glorify you, Lord, the way you know it. You know my prayer. Amen. All right, guys, so I told you I would devote the first 15 or so minutes um, to your public questions, so get at it. That's not a bad thing, though. So what we'll do is we'll let this be, let's say, U2, and let this be EV2, right? So then, uh, you know, D2, uh, DB2, U2 is sine, sorry, still trading, uh, DU2 is cosine of L1 of x, right, divided by x. Salt for I. So I get one half um, x cosine of L of x minus x sine. You can factor out this as the x, of course, sine of the natural log of x. 
agenda. We're, we're doing an indefinite interval here, right? So be, be fair, I have to add constant to account for the, uh, the ambiguity. So there you go. So sometimes you don't get where you want to go to get back where you started, but you get back where you started in such a way that you can solve Same uh, section you point to, number 28. It's like that same exact process. Yep. And you got um, the numerator correct, or like the, the numerator correctly, but then like I had it all over two because you have to have like we started with. Mm -hmm. um, but then I just checked my answer to see what right. it looked like, and it was like over 13, so I was just I have no idea what that means. Chain rule, chain rule, chain rule. Let's do some of it. Um, it doesn't really matter, I think. This one is very forgiving in the sense if I make this DV and if I make this U. Yeah. Um, you could also go the other way. I yeah. think you could actually switch the other one to B. I mean, you could you could either lump the cosine or the exponential into the DV in this case, because yeah. either one you can integrate, and it's kind of like a there's a there's a, there's a symmetry here. But um, if you don't mind, I'm going to skip the uh, yeah this and just get to the point. So we've got U B minus the integral of DV. Right. In particular, if this is U. The thing is, dv, it's got a one half, um, one half in it, because when we integrate cosine of 2x dx, we get one half sine of 2x, right? All right. Um, so that one half is also over here. write this stupid thing down. I'm sorry. <laughs> you know, I'm writing these, these comment bubbles for problems that are so simple you don't need to write them. And now that the problem is complicated enough, I need to write them. I'm not writing it. Come on. All right, e to the 3x. Let's stop that. du is 3 e to the 3x dx. dv is cosine of 2x dx. So v is 1 half sine of 2x. one half, and there's also three from the du, so I get three halves, e to the three x, um, sine two x, three x. So do you see the, whatever you're here, so yeah, you're either I, I see it. not dividing by two or not pulling out the three or some kind of mixture of that. And then you just, you keep going, it loops back. Much like the last problem, I don't want to finish the problem, that's just how to start it. Other questions? Here, let me let me do a simpler. Did I already do a simpler one of these last time without the factors? I forget. I'll do a let me do a slightly tamer version of that one. If I do integral of e to the x, um, cosine of you know two x dx. So now you said I should do what, but the other told me I should actually do what? log, inverse, algebraic, trigonometric, so I should make this u, and I should 
make this DB if I follow through the update. Yeah. <laughs> okay, then, um, so UB minus integral of DU, U equals the cosine of 2x, DU is minus Q sine 2x, DB is D of the x dx, so D is this problem is slightly simpler than the one in your homework because it only has one um, number floating around in the architect. So this is um, e to the x cosine 2x minus integral of e to the x times, well, minus or minus 2e plus, so plus. We can pull this 2 out and cancel the minus, so plus 2 integral of e to the x sine 2x. All right, so next time, I'll follow your direction. So that this will be my B. Two, let's say U2 is sine 2x. So DU2 is 2 cosine 2x. Um, DB, DB2 is what? D to the x dx. So B2 is x dx. And what do we got? Well, we got D to the x cosine 2x. Now the other place that there's a really good opportunity to make mistakes here is not distributing the two over to here and you know not being careful with the minus, but what I have then is I've got e to the x times cosine of 2x um, plus 2 sine 2x um, minus 4 the integral of e to the x times cosine of 2x dx. At this point I can stop. Because you see what I have, I've come back to where I started, right? This is the same as this, except there's a minus 4, right? So we can solve for this is minus 4, all right? So basically add minus 4i to both sides. We'd add 4i to both sides, and we get 5i, right, is equal to e to the x times cosine or 2x plus 2 sine 2x. So therefore, the integral of e to the x cosine of 2x dx is simply equal to one-fifth um, times the exponential of x times cosine of x, cosine of 2x plus 2 sine of 2x, close parentheses, plus a constant. Now this problem's a little bit different than the one that we were just talking about in your homework, of course, because it's got a 2 and a 1. It's no accident that we ended up with 2 squared plus 1, which was 5. Just like you're telling me in the homework problem, if you check it with local math, I'm going to 13, because 13 just happens to be 3 squared um, plus 2 squared, which is 9. And you can, you can kind of visualize why that has to happen algebraically, because we're differentiating the exponential twice, we're differentiating the sine and the cosine twice, and every time we do the differentiation or the integration, we're going to pull out a, either 2 or a 3, and they just the details of the problem end up making it appear as like a squared plus b squared. Anyway, I'll show Other questions? Yeah. Why is it 5? So add this to the other side. So like um, that was minus i. Over here, I had minus i, so I add i to both sides. The step for this would have been 2i is oh, equal yeah. to. I just, I don't, I mean, this algebra is simple enough, I don't feel like I have to write that one. And then we have to add the constant at the end.
Other questions? It's weird to actually meet with you guys. I forgot that we had class meeting this semester. It's weird. Well, there come a week where we get to meet all five days. I don't know. I started to wonder. Maybe Trump will come back. <laughs> On a Tuesday, just for fun. Well, a special Tuesday time. I have another question. Yes. Eight point two, number fourteen. I don't even know where to start. At the beginning, of course. Um, oh, it's a good place to start. Up here, x times x plus five to the minus fourteen. XU and everything else DV. Yeah, that's that's my, my thinking here would be like I would I would not use integration by parts for this problem personally. What I would do is did now did you actually use integration by parts? Oh you did, okay. So um, let me get this out of my system and I'll talk about what you did. Um, so I would rewrite this like this, and then I know if I make u equal to this, u equal to x plus five. Then, if I do that, what's that say? That says x is equal to u minus 5, and du is equal to dx, right? So in terms of a u substitution, just a straight u substitution, this is u minus 5 du divided by u to the 14, which of course is the integral of u to the minus 13 minus 5 u to the minus 14. You, and then you can integrate. I mean, so that, that's my default for this problem. Is I wouldn't use integration by parts, but no. maybe integration by parts is nicer. Well, how's it? How's that help us? So this is the U substitution solution. Or this isn't the integration by parts section, so it makes you wonder, right? Um, let's see here. X times X plus five. The minus 14 dx. Now, what did you what did you make u and what did you make v? Uh, x was u. Everything else was dv. Okay. So this is u. This is dv. Just, I'll, I'll start into it. I won't finish it. This is uv. My integral would be u. Let's see here. If dv <coughs> is x plus five, the minus 14. What's v equal to? x plus 5 to the minus 13 over minus 13. All right, and uh, u is equal to, what did you say? Oh, u is equal to x. <laughs> du is easier to find for dx, okay, great. Um, so what's that give us? That gives us like uh, minus x over 13. Uh, that's my u, my, okay, my uv. Vdu is what? Uh, Oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, whatever floats your boat here, this will do it. And so you can you can finish that with u substitution. We got to the same. Basically, um, the u substitution got us to the same place, right? If you look at it, you see this is we're, we're tending towards the same answer. We're going to have the sum of two things. One involves like plus 5 to the minus 12 power, and the other one involves x plus 5 to the minus 13 power. Should I write more? So you have two options with the problem. You could do either do like a u substitution, right, which is slightly unusual because it involves the step of having to solve for x, right? Or we could use this kind of integration of parts. What's your name in the back? I forgot your name. Thomas. Thomas. Thomas is, it's probably good at that, right? But Thomas's uh, solution is, is also good. Yeah. I won't finish it because I don't want to deprive you of joy. I'm not far from the end of the frame. Oh, 
how would you do that integration of x plus 5 to the minus 13 over minus 13? You know, you equal what? cases and you could you could prove that inequality bit by bit uh, just by case wise analysis. All right, that's one way you could do this. The other way you could do it, and I think this might be more fun, um, found this this morning, would be just to consider a function. F of x equal to um, x minus one minus the square root of x squared minus 1, right? So, um, so then it would it suffices to show what? x squared um, greater than or equal to 1 implies that f of x is 1. infinity to minus 1 included right, unions with 1 to infinity. Also, f is continuous on both of the, both of the intervals that form this domain, right? It's continuous on minus infinity to 
is minus 1. And it's also continuous um, 1 to infinity. These are both connected sets, connected subsets of real numbers, right? So on a connected subset of real numbers, if we have a continuous function, we can apply the so-called, we can apply the so-called intermediate value theorem. Right? And so what is the intermediate value theorem? It says that if f of a is less than f of b, then if you pick anything in between f of a and f of b, there has to be some c between a and b which attains that value. So then our, let me just remind you, or perhaps tell you for the first time in your life, um, how you can solve quadratic inequalities using this notion. Because I'm, I'm basically, the, the solution here I'm outlining for you is based on this example. Like, suppose I wanted to solve um, x squared plus 4x plus 3 um, less than 0. What I would do is I go, okay, well that's x plus 1 times x plus 3 is less than 0, right? This is a continuous function. If I look at f of x is x squared plus 4x plus 3, it's continuous on the reals, right? And so intermediate value theorem, one consequence of that is if I make a number line and I put where the zeros are, in this case minus 3 and minus 1, um, those are the well. Those are the only places where the function is zero, right? And the intermediate value theorem would say that if, if there was somehow, you know, if, if, if there was some way that the function could be positive here and negative here, that wouldn't be possible. Why? The intermediate value theorem says if it goes plus to minus, there has to be some point between the plus and the minus where it crosses zero, right? But if I have enumerated all the zeros, the zero, there's only a zero for x squared plus 4x plus 3 at minus 3 and minus 1, I'm out of luck, right? The only place it can be 0 is at those tick marks. And so this is not possible. It either has to be plus, 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 or minus, 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 and each one of these subintervals. Now here, um, I mean, this is a problem that opens up, so I know what the pattern is going to be. It's going to be like this. But you see that just checking one point in each subinterval suffices because it can only change signs at a zero by the intermediate value theorem. So the solution to this problem is just minus 3 to minus 1. That's the solution set to that quadratic inequality. And what I'm trying to tell you is you can use the same idea for this problem if we look at this function. So what do you got to do? What's the next step? You want to draw a number line, right? But it's a, it's, a, it's a kind of a missing something, right? Because we only consider 1 to infinity and minus infinity to minus 1. And you've got to find all the zeros which line on the domain of f, right? And then use the intermediate value theorem to finish this thought. So how do you find the zeros for f? What do you do? That, that f of x equals 0, right? So f of x equals to 0 implies that x minus 1 um, minus the square root of x squared minus 1 is equal to 0. And you go from there. Solve that, see what you get. I think this is the hardest problem in your homework. Step. Square both sides, and then you should be able to factor it. And what you'll find when you do that carefully is that x equals 1 is the only zero of that. And then you just need to pick two points. You can test like f of minus 2 and f of 2 or something like that. And what you'll find is that the sign chart's very boring. It's just minus, 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 minus. And the only zero is at 1. So by the intermediate value theorem, you can show that f of x is less than or equal to 0, which is the same as proving the original claim.
Uh, and they're kind of the two, uh, two ways of attacking these sorts of problems, right? Just brute force, piecewise analysis with, with inequality properties, right? Or you can use calculus. Calculus helps, right? Other questions? My next question is, is there any particular problem in section 8.2, say between, you know, before number 50, let's say, that you'd like to see me work, or try to work? This is count two. <laughs> there exists a chance I'll get stuck. It is a real possibility in here. What's that? 26. Okay. So that's x times L of x plus 1. try something, and if it doesn't work, we'll try something else. See here. I'm, of course, assuming that x plus 1 is greater than 0 as a precondition of this problem. But, you know, there are these sorts of uh, fine points which are glossed over as we're just studying the algebra of integration. Um, and it does seem so, somewhat hypocritical all of a sudden when we start to care about the analysis in some particular corner of the, the homework, but, you know, Trying to pick our battles. Here we're picking the algebra battle. Uh, let's see here. 1 half x squared natural log of x plus 1. Oh, minus v, right? Minus integral of it's 1 half x squared times dx over x plus 1. Ooh, interesting. 1 half x squared natural log of x plus 1 minus 1 half integral x squared over x plus 1. Yes. Right. I haven't really done much. Just, I just rewrote it. <clears throat> How do you integrate x squared over x plus 1? This is actually the start of a longer conversation we're going to have this week, which is how do you integrate a rational function? It's not usually the case that I can tell you you can integrate any one of these kinds of functions. There's a few simple classes of functions where I can answer affirmative to that question. For example, today, I'll show you we can integrate any power of sine or cosine. Any power we can integrate of sine or cos cosine. It's pretty nice. Um, actually, any rational function you can also integrate. But it's involved. <laughs> okay, this is the uh, so, you know, there's this technique of partial fractions, and uh, so par partial fractal decomposition is the, is the technique we use to integrate rational functions. Um, so, at the start of all that, there's this process of long division. All right, so, like, x squared, I'm just going to 
focus on this integral here. And then we'll come back. Okay, that 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 was kind of a something you may or may not have seen dealt with <coughs> in calculus one. I mean, in a given semester, I might miss it. Not because I'm trying to, just because you know you do a certain uh, cross section of examples, and, and sometimes you just miss a certain type. But this you can do with Calc 1 um, integration techniques and, and a little algebra. So x squared over x plus 1 um, is equal to what? Well, I'll show you a trick. So what I can do is this is x plus 1 minus 1 quantity squared. Add it zero. So this is x plus one squared uh, minus twice x plus one plus one minus by, by x plus one. And um, so what that gives me is uh, x plus one. Some of you will not be happy with this trick. That's your prerogative. Um, I'll show you the other way. So let's see, we're dividing x plus 1 into x squared, right? I mean, this technique of adding 0 is very powerful when you understand it. I, I would encourage you not to ignore what I did in the last, but maybe this is more comfortable to you. Not who am I kidding? Line division. Um, okay, so that's x squared plus x, right? Subtract, what do you got? Got yourself a minus x. How do you get minus x from this? Multiply by minus 1, right? And then you subtract, and you get 1. 1 is the remainder because it has a degree less than, than 1, which is what we're dividing by. So all of this also tells me that x squared over x plus 1 is equal to x minus 1 plus 1 over x minus 1. Now certainly log division is the tool of choice for more complicated examples, but this adding zero technique is especially useful for really short log division problems. Okay, now, now that we have that, you see how to integrate this, right? Yeah, yeah. Sorry, that's a, and I think I propagated that typo over here as well. Let me fix it. That was supposed to be plus, right? Because if I'm dividing by x plus 1, that goes, that's the new denominator, right? Start with that. So um, with that, I'm going to, I think our next topic was integration of trig functions, right? Is that right? I'm going to save
save this for the next section. I have no particular love of writing it again. The next section. Thank you for your question. What's that? I, get? I always get here. They're like not get here, but get close here, and I'm like I'm going to spell it wrong. Well, you know, by the end of this week, you should have a better sense of um, what's possible in terms of integration. I mean, part of the battle is just you know battling with your, your, your lack of confidence of what you can do, right? Um, that's kind of always the mind game, the integration. Confidence goes a long way. But it, uh, <laughs> well, arrogance and ignorance is also a dangerous combination. Look at the, look at the presidential cycle this year. But, um, See, it doesn't matter if you're a Republican or a Democrat. That like that comment equally well applies. <laughs> your basics can integrate sine, cosine, tangent by u substitution, u equals cosine theta. How about powers though? How about the integral like cosine squared? There's a couple different ways to approach this one. The one is integration by parts. How would you try to do this by integration by parts? Now at this point, you can either integration by part, do integration by parts again and loop back, right? I'll do that. So we've got cosine theta, sine theta, plus the integral of sine theta, sine theta, right? So the second time through, I'll let u equal the sine, say u2. Let me check out my signs. Like S I G N. <coughs> Let's see here. So the B D U. Plus, right? Yeah. Um, the 
the second time here. That's a minus cosine theta here, right? Because the integration of sine is minus cosine. What I'm looking at here should be what? It should be like u2, v2 minus the integral of v2, du2, right? here because there's a minus in the V2? Yeah. Okay. this in your homework? If you're doing things correctly, this will happen to you sometimes. You'll integrate, do integrate by parts, and then rather than getting back, see, well, the difference between what just happened and what's happened previously, earlier today, we look back to what we, where we started, but it's not exactly where we started, right? Like, oh, did I erase them? But we, we, we look back to, like, the, not the integral again, but like minus the integral, or some fraction times the integral, right? So then you can do meaningful algebra to solve for the integral equal to some function. This, we have just produced that the integral of cosine squared theta is equal to the integral of cosine squared theta. I mean, is this true? Absolutely. But does this help us? Not particularly. There's a different path we could have gone down. Um, so if I, if I go back to here, right? Then I have the integral of cosine squared theta, d theta, it's cosine theta sine theta um, plus the integral of sine squared theta d theta. Now, the integral of sine squared theta is very much related to the integral of, of cosine squared, right? I mean, I can trade this for 1 minus cosine squared theta d theta, right? Agreed? And see, now we're in business because this gives me cosine theta sine theta plus theta minus the integral of cosine squared theta, d theta, and there we go. We win, right? So we have looped back to the integral, but not just, just, not just exactly to the integral. So this is more like i has looped back to some function, and this is minus i, right? So I can solve for i, what do I get? half sine theta cosine theta um, plus plus theta plus constant. You you should be relieved when I tell you this is not how we typically do the integral of cosine squared. I just wanted to show you that, in fact, it's within your grasp, it's within your clutches if you use integration by parts and have a little perseverance. But there's an easier way to do this integral, what is it? And let me just say, let me show you the quote unquote correct way to do the integral. What's the correct way to do this integral?
how would this the integral of the cosine squared theta d theta is the same as the integral of one half of one plus cosine of two theta. theta. Right? That's that's why I was talking to you guys about those things last week. Now it's when they matter. One of the times they matter actually they matter for other things, but well that's very nice because this stuff I can just integrate that right bit by bit. This is I mean, I'm going to get straight to the point. That's theta over 2 um, plus 1 fourth sine of 2 theta plus a constant. There you have it. I did a u substitution in that step, right? I made a u equals 2 cosine theta substitution. That's where the extra half came from. Remember, integration is educated guessing, so you can judge me by my by my by my by my, by my, by my words. Bruce, um, <laughs> differentiate this. Get back here. You're like, well, but that, but how can this be? These are different answers. No, they're not. They're really not, because sine two theta is what? Right, it's two sine theta cosine theta. So in fact, the same answer. They don't have to be the same answer, right? They could differ by some additive constant that would still be the same integral. Keep that in mind as you're comparing different homeworks. You have somebody else working on it, they get a radically different answer than you. Maybe their answer is your answer plus five or something. You know, like that. Doesn't usually, but good. Okay. Any questions? Which do you prefer, that or this? That's right, trigonometry is a lifeline. You must know trigonometry. How about the integral of sine squared theta? So there you have it, theta over 2 um, plus, or rather minus, 1 fourth sine of 2 theta plus a constant. All right, so we got power 1, we got power 2. How about cubes? What's the integral of sine? Oh, I guess I should talk about tangent squared. How about the integral of tangent squared? What's that? We look back at the tangent first back from here. What's the integral of tangent squared? Oh, tangent squared. Oh, let's do a simpler one before we do that. What's the integral of secant squared? integration by parts, u substitution, what do we use to integrate sequence squared theta? We just integrate, right? This is an elementary integral. There's no work to do here. If you're doing work, you're doing it wrong. This is tangent theta, because we know the derivative of tangent is sequence squared, right? I should put some quotes on that note, because if you don't know it, all of a sudden, you just made yourself an hour of unnecessary work here. That's why it's so important to go make sure you know those elementary antiderivatives. Otherwise, you will. It, it, I know it seems like a small thing, but trust me, after the hour you spend trying to do this integral, then you'll, you'll understand that you should learn the basic ones because that's where we build things from, right? The system of educated guessing. We must be educated about the basic guesses. All right, so how about that one? It's so important to know your trig identities, right? This is the integral of what? Remember, secant squared, excuse me, tangent squared plus one is equal to secant squared theta, right? So this is actually the integral of what? Squared theta. Ah, see, now it's not so bad. This is straight up tangent theta minus theta plus a constant term. So we've got sine, cosine, and tangent from powers one to two. Let's now look at the third order. Have you guys all seen Star Wars Force Awakens? Yeah. Anybody here not seen it? Oh. There's stories I'd like to tell you. 
it involved my, my, my daughter ruining it for my little brother for the Christmas dinner. She told him three things about the movie that completely ruined it. I was, it was a masterpiece of spoiling. I, I was very proud of Hannah. I don't think she was doing it on purpose either. She just likes just a natural. It's it great. Now my brother is committed to watching the midnight viewing and the next one has to avoid Hannah's <laughs> commentary. So let's see here, integral of sine cube theta. It's weird. Even powers are harder, I think, than odd powers for sine and cosine. Um, and, it, and it flips over. Even powers are easier for tangent and secant, and they're harder for odd powers for tangent and secant. There's some kind of duality there. So this is what? This is sine squared theta times sine theta d theta, which is what? This is actually the integral of 1 minus cosine squared theta. So if we let u equals to cosine theta, du is minus sine theta d theta. By the way, I don't really need integration of parts for much of what I'm doing in this part of the lecture, right? Like I've, I've, I'm on to the next section, integrals of trig functions. Um, and then what? This is really the integral of 1 minus u squared times minus du. So I get myself a 1 third u cubed minus u plus a constant, in other words, one third uh, cosine cubed theta minus cosine theta plus a constant. Now I will warn you, um, these, especially these kinds of problems, there are so many fascinating identities that are known for trig functions. This might not be what you find from Wolfram Alpha or something. It might give you a different answer, which is equivalent, but it looks radically different. Right. But anyway, there is a answer. How would you integrate cosine cube? I'll start it, I will finish it. This would be cosine squared theta times cosine theta d theta, right? sine squared theta times cosine theta d theta, right? See where we're going? You make u equal what this time? Sine theta. Sine theta, right. Are we good? Yes, sir? I was just curious if you were going to use the 1 minus uh, sine 2 theta over there, or is that a different identity? The 1 minus... Oh, no, no. Well, but the thing is, I don't face the integral of sine squared on its lonesome. I have the integral of sine squared times cosine theta. So it's a completely different animal. Now, there might be a place where we need to use the second order. Maybe that's the, the fourth order. So there we go, that's this cube. Oh, I guess I should talk about integrals of secant as well, huh? What's the integral of secant theta? Let me go back to the first order. I was trying to make this a friendly lecture, but at some point, at some point we have to pay the rent. Um, I mean, this, 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 is, uh, this is a grown-up integral. This is not easy. <laughs> I, there's no way to sugarcoat this, really. I'll show you. Uh, you this is one of those ones you really want to memorize once I show you uh, secant theta. I mean, there's other ways of deriving it, but here's the easiest way. You let u equal secant theta plus tangent theta. At which point you should go, what? Right? Is there a secant plus tangent in that integral? Yeah. 